Hey everybody, welcome back to Let's Play Mega Man 5. So, time to take out Charge Man, who's the train robot. Why is he a train robot? Why is there a train robot to begin with? Alright. I don't even understand what Capcom is doing at this point. Anyway, this uh, level's not too bad, but the boss is pretty annoying. One of the more annoying bosses in the game, actually. Even with the weapon you're supposed to use on him. I'm not saying he's really hard with the right weapon, it's just a bothersome fight because he has a bunch of uh, attacks to make him invincible. So, I'm just gonna have to deal with that when I get there. Oh, hey, light. I will not extra lives because I don't really need those anymore. So I have nine. The game won't let me have more than that. Uh, I don't know what it is about this game, but uh, they really up that. Whatever the percentage chance it is to get extra lives to spawn. Even Capcom employees have agreed with me that it's just a little ridiculous. I actually just watched the Mega Man 5 stream a couple days ago that uh, Capcom Unity is doing. Went pretty well. It's kind of funny to um, be giving Capcom employees tips out the bosses, but... Well, they weren't there when the game was made, so I guess you can't really fault them for not knowing everything, and... Your fan base is going to know more about the game than you most of the time anyway. Because we're going to find random bugs, glitches, exploits... Things that weren't intended to be in the game originally, and, well, they're part of the game now. Look at Wave Dashing and uh, Super Smash Brothers. You can't tell me Nintendo intended for that to happen, but they rolled with it when it did. And it's like, oh no, that's illegal, you can't do that in tournaments. I mean, it was there, and you're not gonna have an easy time stopping people from doing it. It's kind of the same thing Blizzard really game that Blizzard's doing with uh, all their newer games by having the Battle.net stuff that you have to be in to play some, like Diablo 3. It's mostly a way to uh, control what the user base can and can't do. And what was it? The uh... Wow, <laughs> I think that's like the fourth or fifth life that's dropped this stage alone. Oh, there's another. Anyway, I was saying something about the, uh... What the hell's it called? The, fr the free market... Money... Accessing real money on in-game items. The Blizzard knows that's just gonna happen anyway, so... That's why that exists. So they can at least do something about it. Regulate it. Make some money off of it. It's good business sense. Can't really blame them. As much as everyone is pissed off at Blizzard about that. So, as you notice, this guy's pattern is to basically try and get close to you and either drop rocks on your head or charge at you. And with the Power Stone, my tactic is to just be on the opposite side of the stage from him as much as I can and jump over him when he charges. If he uh, drops rocks so they fall on the two sidelines and one in the middle, well, you probably have enough room to move closer to him to dodge, but I out damage him so easily with the power zone, I don't care. And we get the charge kick, which, well, you guys are going to understand why I think it's the falcon kick in disguise, or rather, it's the, uh, the original design for the falcon kick, since this came out way before Smash Brothers. I mean, come on. It's a modification of your slide. And that's practically what the Falcon Kick is. A slide, actually. Where if he used to get through? Oh, hey! Wow, I never thought of trying that. I remember that sometimes the Charge Kick actually gets you through uh, enemies and things that would normally hurt you. That was not what I wanted. That isn't either. <laughs> I want to use the Super Arrow. Whoa. Because I want to... There we go. That's how you would get up there, easily. You probably use the jet or something else. And then coming down here, you can get another life. 
which obviously I don't need. Now I don't think a charge cup will get you through these. I think that it's still gonna hurt you. Yeah, it is. Those things actually hurt for a lot too. Hm. Maybe I should be more careful in trying out new things. Actually, speaking of new things. Whee! It would take a long time to get through that if I were to actually try and jump around all those things. Because you have to wait for them to get so close that you can jump over them because they're so slow. <sighs> Not that I really have a complaint with the area, it's just... I, I don't like waiting forever. I have patience problems. To an extent. See? And there is some kind of crazy glitch you can do in this area by riding super arrows through this invisible barrier. But I don't really want to do it because it can have a chance of like breaking the level and the game. But you basically get to just run through this area and play through it as if you were kind of playing it normally. Or it can completely screw up and send you like flying backwards off the screen or forwards off the screen and then you can't actually progress. And this area is going to have the letter in it after a um, mid-boss or mini-boss, whatever you want to think of them as. And it's going to suck. Also, I can't help but do this fight and think of Adventure Island 2. Just because there's so many fights in that game where you're like riding on a object, usually a dinosaur, and have a sta mostly stationary boss to fight. I think it was actually pretty cool, but it's really hard near the end, as I recall. I don't think I ever did beat it. I felt like the ice levels, or, well, not the ice world, which is the fifth world, like the ice mountain, like, world seven, I think. I don't know. That was another game from my childhood that I played a lot, but never actually finished. This leather! Oh, I was talking too much about nostalgic games and stuff. Crap. <laughs> well, at this point, uh, the best thing I could do for myself is commit suicide and retry to get that letter. Because otherwise I'll have to play through the first part of the stage again, which, while it isn't incredibly long, is still pretty annoying. And even his body doesn't do more damage than the bullets would. So, uh, I guess I'm gonna retry that. I might just cut that out because, well, I'll cut out this attempt because it's kind of annoying. Or maybe I'll just cut back after the mid-boss. Okay, now to get that letter, it's not so bad, as long as you know what to expect, or what's coming up. There's a large gap of, you know, having no enemies around, and then there's the double dolphin thing, and my best strategy for it, I think, is to try and go under them real fast and jump up into the letter. Otherwise, you could try and jump over them. Is it here? Yes. Got it. Okay. Well, now if I could just get a little more help before the boss, that would be great! Um, that's probably good enough. Yeah, Wave Man might be my most hated boss of this game. Oh, I thought I could actually hit that guy. Because he's a gigantic asshole. And I'm going to be really disappointed if I die and use a bunch of my charge kick here. Yeah, he's, uh, those water spouts he makes you can't slide through, and they do a good amount of damage. And Wave Man's 
tactic is to kind of be right in your face. Oh, yeah, of course. Put the spell on you so I can't even hurt you. Well, there we go. That wasn't too bad. I definitely had worse fights with Wave Man. You know, the ones that involved me exploding. Basically, the way I think of him is he's like Flame Man from the next game, but with fewer things going on, but still more difficult. I think he does more damage, and it's harder to tell what he's going to do with that water spell. So, that's everything for the main eight stages of the game. Next time, I'm going to take on Perloman's Castle. See you guys then!